All right. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the uh, Tuesday, August 20, 2019 meeting of the uh, Dinah City Council. Uh, roll call, please, Ms. Allison. Roll call, please. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, thank you. Uh, last meeting, we started uh, saying the Pledge of Allegiance at our, uh, our uh, council meetings, and um, for all of you who are comfortable, uh, feel like you want to join us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, we'd ask you to stand, and we will go through the Pledge of Allegiance now. The Pledge of Allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. One of our uh, residents had a uh, suggestion last meeting that um, uh, because of some of the controversy around saying the pledge, you know, inviting folks to uh, who want to say the pledge to join us in standing and saying the pledge, but if you do not, do not feel comfortable doing so, we certainly understand that as well. And this is a place where we want you to be able to express uh, your opinions and beliefs freely. So um, I think we're going to adopt that kind of methodology on a going forward basis. Uh, Ms. Ellison, thank you for uh, that curious look you gave me. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mayor, get to that Pledge of Allegiance that we started to say. And I think we're going to hear a little bit from the city manager and some of his responses too and then member fisher has a comment he wants to make when the city manager is done with his uh, comments um roll call please miss allison member anderson here member brindle here member staunton here member fisher here mayor hovland here uh we have a form of agenda in front of us this evening manager neal any changes or additions uh, corrections no, no changes or additions okay all right, uh, anyone from council want to amend the agenda? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the meeting agenda as shown. So moved. Second. second. Got a motion and second to adopt the meeting agenda as shown. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. All right, and now we are on to uh, community comment. I know there's some folks in the audience that have some concerns they want to address uh, the council on. And I think um, if you heard Ms. Benarod at the beginning, you'll have three minutes. You'll get a green light, and then when you've got 30 seconds left, you'll get a, uh, a cautionary yellow light, and then you will have uh, to wrap up your comments when you see the, the red hook. light blinking. <laughs> yeah. So, Mayor and Council, respectively, appear. My name is Thomas Winninger. I've lived in Edina, Minnesota, on the same address at 5637 Interlock and Circle for 25 years, raised four children here. I have never appeared here before. I have never had a concern like this before. And the late group from Highland who came and spoke a couple weeks ago, my neighbor John Burnett and I were unavailable to appear. So we thought we could validate a few things for you since we are the neighbors who are truly affected by the rise in the water because our land is now flooded from the lake. Our yards are flooded from the lake. And John and I took some pictures this afternoon. And this didn't start 14 years ago this happened and I believe the city put in a pump to try to get rid of some of the water from the lake and until, the four, until this started happening again frequently, we weren't worried about it. But now it's happening all the time. As a matter of fact, when we got up this morning, our backyards were dry. When we stood in them this afternoon, there were a couple of feet in our backyards. This is not on the park, this is in our yards. It's actually coming into our yard. Fortunately, our houses are high enough that it's not threatening our, our physical plants. But uh, in a few years ago when this happened, the city came out and split seeded the property to try to get our grass to come back, and it did do a good job for a while. But we were very concerned. We don't know what to do about this. And the rain this morning did this. This was dry yesterday. And that's kind of what's happening in the process. So whatever else happens to the park, we have a physical condition here that is affecting the value of our property. And, and this is very concerning to us. And we're not quite sure how to address this. We have a feeling that water is coming from somewhere and getting into this pond without control. And we're not quite sure how that's happening. Uh, John and I are not smart enough or devious enough to try to run around and see where all the holes are that are coming from the ponds at Interlock and Golf Course. But, uh, but it must be coming from somewhere because it's just too much water. 
All right. Well, thank you. Oh, I still stayed in the green, didn't I? Yeah, yeah you did. <laughs> You're still in the green. And if maybe you weren't finished, you, you were so doing well. Sure. We thank you. So this is, this is John modeling the water. Yeah. Well, that was the last one. There we saw that. But, so That's this, our backyards. So this morning, the dirt that you're seeing here was all like that, where it looks like just mud. That's the left side of my yard. But then in an hour after, and it was a hard rain, but it just flooded like crazy. You can see, I took this this afternoon, or Tom did. So our lot line is behind me about 10 yards. Yeah. Uh, so anyway. And, and that's that kind of those flags are our, our, our sprinkler system. Yeah. So the city's property, obviously the, the yellow flags are on our property, and the city's property would be towards the lake, well, towards the Did lake that's on the right side. Where we show both our lot lines. Our lot lines come together at the corner of the park down there. Yeah, I don't know. We don't have that one. I'm yeah, and I'm going to have Mr. Barnett. Uh, okay. Technology you're, you're at its best. You're and have Mr. Barnett identify himself too, and if you want a little extra time, you'll have th your own three minutes. All right. My name is John Barnett. I live at 5633 Interlock and Circle. So obviously, Tom's kind of told the story. What we're really trying to do is just have you guys take a peek at it and see if you can figure out. It happened in 2014. I went through a lot of pictures. So the last time this happened was 2014, before this year, and the city paid for it to slit seed it. As Tom said, came in, the grass came back, it's been good since then. Um, I brought a couple of truckloads of dirt in and was told by the city uh, that I can't bring dirt in without a permit. Didn't do any good anyway. And uh, so I tried to fix it on my own and it just didn't cut it. So we're just trying to figure out, you know, if we need to put a retaining wall back where you see the water line and then just make it be part of the lake. If you guys could bring some bulldozers in there and just carve out that spot and we'll just make the lake bigger or figure out a way to hold the water back if there's any possibility of that so I don't know if you guys have any questions or not but yeah good those uh, photos are very um, helpful yeah. to our discussion and we're going to have a conversation I think uh, manager Neil is going to talk a little bit about uh, somebody investigating he's done along with staff so right, I don't know if you a few folks can stick around uh, a little bit uh, they make the comments may come earlier or are you going to make them at the end of the meeting manager Neil Responding to community comment at the next. Okay, so if you can bear with us uh, for a few minutes, we'll I got get a to cruise. His I'm sorry. We we had a dinner with Alex, and we we, we pushed a dinner back an hour with our son and daughter in law, right. so we're gonna cruise. Okay. But All anyway, right. Thank you. Thank you. I gotta go do the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Barnett. Thank you, Mr. Winninger. Anyone else for community comment? Yes, sir. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Thank you for having us. My name is Craig Holtz. Uh, we have a, my wife will introduce herself. We uh, own a business at 5500 Lincoln Drive, which is the Edina Business Center building, if you're familiar off that, off of uh, Londonderry and, um, and 169. About a year ago, we uh, endeavored in um, our, our future businesses off of uh, the cosmetic industry and the beauty industry, and we opened up um, what's, you know, probably called today more of a med spa here in, in Edina. And we've had uh, a lot of uh, success. We've expanded from one to three suites in that building. And I'm gonna show you some real quick pictures here in terms of what we have to offer. And then I'll, I'll, I'll um, give you guys kind of the ask of why we're here. So we provide services and training. We are accredited uh, school through the board, State Board of Minnesota, to actually teach all cosmetology uh, classes and courses, including uh, micro needling, uh, micro blading, uh, which is really under, under our state license as body art. And so these are just really some reference slides for you to kind of look at what we do. Inside of our building and outside of our building, you'll notice that the 5500 location, um, you know, signage is just the number of the building. And our customers find us through that. Uh, as you walk inside, you can see it's very upscale, the very clinical looking. Uh, as you walk in. These are some pictures of what we do uh, as our training um, facility. We, we offer, like I said, many different types of training for students. We have apprenticeship program that's sponsored through the state of Minnesota. And uh, we all also uh, offer some of our students that are very highly skilled uh, jobs within the community. Why we're here today is as part of uh, our uh, venture and, and working with uh, the city folks as well as the state folks, 
Uh, Inspector Jeff Brown, I don't know if you're fam familiar with Jeff, he just wanted us to appear tonight just to talk to you guys a little bit about clarification in terms of what body art is here um, from a state standpoint. So from the statute standpoint, body art really is anything that is applied uh, to head to toe. And you know, with, with uh, the, the onset of, of beauty and more lip enhancement and eye, eyebrow extensions, uh, cancer patients that want areolas done in their chest areas, it's expanding to other parts of the body. And that's why the state calls it a body, art, body art license that, that we uh, obtain and hold. And as part of that, we just want to make sure that um, the city is aware that we are doing full body art here at our facility uh, to enhance the customer experience from the uh, Edina uh, clients as well as clients all around the Minneapolis metro area and, and clients that come to us from out of state. So with that, I, I know I only have three minutes. Kay, is there anything I'm missing on the conversation? That you might want to add, Kay, as my wife co-owner? Sure, and you uh, certainly can have your own three minutes if you want to Kay, you introduce want to yourself. The you passed around. It does have the, the license in there and things. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Holt, and uh, welcome. Hi, my name is Kay Nguyen, and I am one of the um, master instructor um, at the Minnesota Brow Lash Studio and Academy at the address of 5500 Lincoln Drive, suite number 120 and 120, 140. So um, I, we just want to clarify that um, because from conversation with uh, uh, passing the inspection with Jeff, Everything was spotless and everything is good. So he just wanted us to come to the city council and to make sure that our licensing is good through, um, because like me, myself, I am uh, licensed under the body art under the state, because the state issue our license as body art licensing, and then also our facility is body art licensing. So Jeff just want us to make sure that uh, we can perform uh, body art for in our facility. So that's all, just for the clarification. Okay, well, as we sit here tonight, we can't give you a clarification because we would turn to someone like our city attorney uh, and ask for his interpretation of that state statute. And um, whether he can give that tonight or we can give it to you at a subsequent time, uh, understanding the uh, inquiry that Jeff is making and asked you to make to us, we're, we can certainly check on that and then, and then get back to you. And that's what we do often here. Uh, we'll gather the information and then go and do their, our research so we can give you uh, an intelligible uh, answer and a helpful answer. So. Yeah, because Jeff actually said that the on the city ordinance, it, it didn't say yes, that we can do it. It didn't say no, we cannot do it. So we just want to make sure that we are good and fully understand the rules and the laws and all of that stuff to make sure that it, we are good. You know, because we are actually not of um, a, you know, uh, like we are an academy. So uh, we just want to make sure that it's safe with the city and it's approved by the mm -hmm. city. You, so you, you, yes, yes, go ahead, finish your thought. So um, since you're going to do research, uh, would that be appropriate to come back for the next meeting or how? Or? Manager Neal. Uh, Your Honor and members of council, uh, I can confer with, uh, with Chief Nelson, who is, uh, who is uh, Mr. Brown's supervisor and the city attorney. We'll research this and we'll, we'll get back with you and let you know what we find. We can do that. Because uh, clearly what I hear you saying is that you want to know, you want to make sure that everything you're doing is, is uh, in compliance with not only state law but city ordinance. Yeah, and our, and our, our focus is we're getting a lot of requests from head to toe uh, body art. And, okay. Yeah, so we just want to make sure that, that, that the city is fine with that, the state is fine with that. We just want to make sure that, that we're fine with that as, as partners with the city. All right, very good. Thank you for coming this evening. All right. Thank you. For having Thank us. you. All right. Is there any, anyone else uh, in the audience that has a concern they wish to raise with the council? Hello, um, Janie Weston, 6136 Brookview Avenue. Um, last uh, meeting two weeks ago when I spoke with you uh, about the Pledge of Allegiance and um, uh, matters relating to that, I gave you two ideas to think about for future possible action. Um, I keep thinking. I have a lot of time to think when I'm sculpting and I've got my hearing protection on and the rest of the world is cut off. So I want to make a few points and then I have something I want to share with all of you. The Pledge of Allegiance is absolutely fitting 
and appropriate for many, many occasions to be uh, said. For instance, a new citizenship um, ceremony for people just receiving their citizenship of the United States, military ceremonies, VFW meetings, the opening session of U.S. Congress, um, the Senate and Congress, they should be saying the Pledge of Allegiance too. And frankly, I don't know if they do, but they should be because they're representing our country. But in the case of a city council meeting, and I've given this an awful lot of thought, I feel that it has become a rather divisive thing for it to be recited. It fits for some people, it does not fit for many other people. Um, not, all US, not all residents of Edina are US citizens, for goodness sakes. Some have allegiance to another flag. For example, our star French immersion language school aides, they come from different countries and they are not United States citizens. Not all from France either, by the way. Our city has permanent residents and people that also have dual citizenship. They may have two flags they may have allegiance to. With that said, I have an idea that I think is a much better idea. So let me present this. And I'm gonna put this out here in the middle. I got out my pen last night. I'm a calligrapher, but I winged this one. I didn't even rule lines. I just got out my felt tip marker and I wrote it out. And I decided I would write something that I think would be much more inclusive of everybody. This is a community meeting. Community, if you break it down into Latin, means with unity. And I'm really kind of tired of all the this side throwing accusations at that side and the whole country being so split. And it's not just the country. So many parts of the world are going through the same thing right now. And it's not good. So this is what I have come up with. And it begins with we, not I, as the Pledge of Allegiance does. We will strive together to be honest and fair, to be respectful of all people, to act responsibly and do what is best for the most people possible, both now and for 100 years. So every time you say this, it renews another 100 years. I want this to be something to remind people every time we are gathered here that we are here to try and work together. And these basic, basic goodwill unifying words I hope can be inspirational. And I would like to see this said instead of the Pledge of Allegiance because this is extremely very, very fitting and very appropriate. Thank and you, I Ms. Have, Weston. Thank you. I have copies for everyone up here. Thank you. I have a few extras, and I will leave them on the podium thing outside the door if anybody wants to take one. Very good. Thank, thank you for coming this evening. You know what else, uh, anyone else for community comment? All right, we're going to move on to the next portion of the agenda, which is the uh, City Manager's response to community comment from two weeks ago. Manager Neal. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we had we had six speakers uh, at our last community comment, 35 minutes or so, uh, and that was uh, more than we usually have. Uh, there were a couple of common topics. Um, Arnie Bigby uh, expressed his appreciation for the council's work on, on difficult items, uh, difficult issues around the community 
particularly uh, race and equity issues. Uh, George Kluse, uh, Sue Punch Hess, uh, Bob Tangden, and uh, Dave Tangden were all here to speak about issues relating to uh, Highlands Park and the and the water issues that that uh, Mr. Uh, um, Barnett had asked about earlier this evening. Uh, the city engineer and I have had a chance to uh, talk about that after after that last meeting, and I think would like to uh, tell the council that we think it it is uh, there is sufficient cause and, and justification for us to take a, a deeper analytical look at this issue. Um, we don't. Uh, we could. We could talk a lot about what the cause is, and we will have to talk about what the cause is. But I would say we don't have a, a good enough understanding about what the cause is uh, of of the water um, that's been standing in the areas that's been interrupting people's use of this land. Uh, we can point to the water coming from the sky, and I think that's a pretty uh, likely. Um, culprit in this case, but there are other issues happening too. And, and for us to be able to do that, we need to apply some professional analysis to it on the engineering side. And we also need to provide, we also need to take a look at this area from the park and recreation side as well. So we're going to, uh, and we will bring this uh, a contract back to the council, uh, contract with uh, an analytical engineer that we use in a number of cases like this, bar engineering, to come in and to take a comprehensive look at what's happening in this area from a system standpoint. Um, they will work for uh, uh, Mr. Milner uh, much as they did uh, in the Biscayne Boulevard uh, situation that we had them come in and do, uh, we had a different firm <laughs> come in and do some work for us a couple of years ago. But we would like to apply that uh, attempt that, uh, as you as you will recall, in uh, the Biscayne Boulevard area, that does involve uh, discussion and involvement with the neighbors, and so we would uh, we know that's going to take place in in this situation as well. But that's what we'd like to do um, going forward with this. Um, don't have a timeline for it other than to reach out to uh, to Bar and get this on their calendars as soon as we can, and then bring it back to you for a contract approval if it fits within that uh, cost structure. Okay. I don't think you need a motion to have you go forward and talk to Barr about no, no, a potential but, contract. Yeah, but, but I just want to, be, this is an issue that's come no. up for a couple of council meetings now, and I just wanted you to understand that uh, that we want to be helpful too, and, and in, in order to be helpful, we need to understand how this system works, because in the stormwater, uh, in stormwater management situations, pumping water out of one spot almost always means we're just pumping it into somebody else's land, right? And so we want to make sure we have an understanding of where it, where it's coming from and where it's going so that we can treat it appropriately. Yeah. So we've got our own property, plus we now have the uh, another illustration as we saw this evening of intrusion into private property. Sure. right. So, okay. All right, Mr. very good. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Mayor, can I yes. just piggyback on that? I just wanted to mention I got an interesting um, message from a neighbor um, this week who I think took a uh, um, an interesting different approach to this which was thinking about it less as an engineering problem and more as a park issue and that we're you know maybe we're gonna have some stormwater management in this portion of the park but what we heard last week from neighbors not so much this week but last week was there was a diminution in the usefulness of the park that there's a passive um, recreation portion of the park that is no longer usable. There was a trail that that and the folks in the neighborhood use quite a bit. And so as we look at this, and I appreciate the city <coughs> manager's um, notion about making sure we understand the problem before we try to get the solution, I would encourage us to think about the solutions in terms of both not just an engineering approach, but a park approach and how we might be able to work with what's happening in order to fashion a useful um, recreational spot for folks in the neighborhood. Agreed. And we will do that. Thank you. Remember I did talking. have the opportunity to do the uh, Bob Tingdon forced march around the, uh, around the water, and we went from Mr. Barnett's backyard, essentially, all the way back to the skyline uh, stairs. And, right, uh, and just It's an interesting, beautiful piece of our city. And as a, to put it in some context, the pictures we saw tonight are directly on the opposite side from yeah. Ms. Punch and, and Mr. Tingdon. So it's happening to everybody all the way around, as well as to the park itself. And it's a portion of the park that 
folks who go on there for football or soccer don't see because it's it's back behind the um, skating rink and in a in a wooded area of the park that's really a nice gem for the neighborhood or was the the final comments from last week um, uh, Ms. Weston referenced her comments about the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Jean Persia also had comments about the Pledge of Allegiance. I, it, I won't comment on their comments because that's not what this is about, but uh, Ms. Weston uh, did raise a question about uh, how this got on the agenda. Um, the draft agenda that is prepared uh, prior to the council meeting is prepared uh, by the city manager, by me, in consultation with staff. And it's the draft agenda that gets onto our website um, before it gets into the council meeting. Uh, the draft agenda is the operating, is the effective agenda until the council acts on, on item number four on your regular agenda where, where you approve the meeting agenda. And, and at that point, it becomes the council's agenda. Um, I proposed uh, the location of, of the, uh, the action on the Pledge of Allegiance to your consent agenda uh, because um, I did not believe it to be, I, I believe that some people believe it's, it's controversial. I don't in my heart believe it's controversial and uh, I do believe it, it was routine and it does not uh, take away from our meeting in my view. So that's why I placed it where I placed it, but that was my call. She, she, asked, the, she asked the question about whose decision it was to at least place it in that consent agenda and that would would have been my decision thank you and, Neil. and uh, that's a great segue to member Fisher who has some thoughts he wants to share on this matter and, and well. I'm done that was all that was the last one that was thank you that's what I thought member Fisher so now I'm gonna ruin a perfectly good segue by going back to the water <laughs> real quick sure. uh, interesting this morning I was reading emails catching up and from the watershed district, they talked about this being the second wettest year in history. Um, and then I heard the thunder. So when I was reading the email, that was before today's storm. So we're probably there uh, and it's August. So um, I know there are a lot of complications here, but we, we have to f manage the fact that it's changing um, and it's definitely affecting folks in our community. Um, I, I wanted to talk for just a minute, and I asked the mayor if I could talk for a little bit in response to last meeting's community comment regarding the pledge. Uh, I think I'm the only council member that has not given one single comment about it uh, to this point. Um, so I thought it's time I at least share what I was thinking, and, uh, and, and really in response to much of what not only did we hear at the last meeting, but what we've all been getting in our emails and phone calls and, and, uh, and on both sides of this. And uh, so my thoughts, um, and, and it's, it's basically, we're getting correspondence about, you know, people are very concerned. I, I timed it, it's 12.5 seconds of our meeting agenda and it's creating a lot of angst. Um, but so for context, I wanna make it clear that I, I don't subscribe to any political party never have because I feel very strongly that I want to support candidates that bring us together not pull us apart so if you join a team by definition we we, t we tend to jump on the team and then think the other team's no good um, it's just not the way I think uh, sadly it's getting harder and harder to find those people um, so the pledge has not been part of our council meetings as far as I can tell ever um, so when the question was proposed, I'd never given it any thought, just never crossed my mind. Um, but in that wave of correspondence that we received, a number of them were from military veterans. And everyone that I got from a veteran was saying it was important to them. And that's really all I needed. Because if you're a veteran and you're putting yourself out there for this country and that's important to you, that was okay for me. That was enough. Um, so like I said, I didn't have a strong opinion on it before, but the thing I have a really strong opinion about is, that, is about using time at our council meeting to debate the merits of the Pledge of Allegiance. So that's why I absolutely was a proponent of what Manager Neal proposed in putting it on the consent agenda. I thought that was the right move um, because it eliminated the opportunity for public debate on this topic. So I think the role of a city council is to be the policy level decision makers 
on things that affect our city, providing services, planning for the future, all that kind of stuff. I don't think our role is to host ideological debates. I don't think uh, it's any more appropriate to debate the value of the Pledge of Allegiance here than it is to debate uh, abortion or the death penalty. Those things are outside the purview of what we should be focusing on at a city council level. Our meeting that night went till midnight, just dealing with the issues of our city. Imagine if we had opened up a debate to folks to come in and talk about the pledge. So I think we voted wisely in instituting the pledge on our agenda um, because as I think about it, it's the only scenario that allows everyone to express their ideologies equally. So if there was no pledge, then the folks that wanted the pledge don't have an opportunity to express themselves. The fact that we have a pledge now means that anybody in this room that believes in that and wants to stand up for that can do that. And I hope that we have an environment where anybody that doesn't want to do that feels equally comfortable sitting or being quiet and not saying the pledge. That we have an environment that's inclusive to everybody and that nobody feels uncomfortable because of how they feel. That should be our ideal in this chamber. Um, as for me, I still cling to the hope that society will reject this divisiveness and that those who promote it. Um, that's why when I recite the pledge, I'm going to be adding emphasis to the words indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Member Fisher. Um, thank you very much. Let us uh, move on now to the uh, consent agenda. Is there anyone on the council that wishes to remove an item from the consent agenda? Um, otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the consent agenda as shown. So moved. Second. We've got a motion and a second to adopt the consent agenda as shown. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. And now, uh, moving on uh, beyond the consent agenda, the next portion of the agenda is uh, special recognitions and presentation. Mr. Abood, thanks for coming this evening. Thank you. Um, I think this will be an interesting winter with uh, that technology here. We're going to move on. We're going to move on to the uh, special recognitions and presentations portion of the agenda. And uh, the first matter we have there, and the only matter in this portion of the agenda, is a proclamation. And I want to ask uh, Tom Gump to come forward. And uh, uh, he was good at, uh, at emailing me and say, hey, we did this last year. We should do it again. And it was a great, uh, a great reminder uh, that it was uh, something that was important to do last year and this year as well in recognizing this 4th of uh, July uh, team and everybody else that's responsible for the 4th of July parade. So the proclamation reads as follows. The header on it is 2019 Edina 4th of July parade team, Edina Community Foundation, and Edina Police Department. Whereas the first Edina 4th of July parade took place uh, on July 4th, 1988, as part of the city of Edina's centennial celebration. And whereas following the 1988 centennial celebration, the city of Edina took over the parade as a community event, forming a committee of volunteers to organize the parade. And whereas since 2006, the parade has been organized and funded by the Edina Community Foundation and run by its core volunteers. And whereas the parade brings our city together with estimated attendance of over 25,000 people at the 2019 parade. And whereas the 2019 Fourth of July parade had units involving 102 civic, entertainment, and community groups that marched from Edina City Hall to the 50th and France area on 50th Street. And whereas the parade-related activities for 2019 included a Veterans Day dinner on the evening of July 3rd, 2019, with General Denny Schulstedt as its keynote speaker and hosted by the Edina Veterans War Memorial Fund and fireworks at Roslyn Park on the evening of July 4th, 2019, sponsored by the Fairview Southdale Hospital. And you would also have found uh, member Brindle down there playing in the, uh, the band that was uh, in attendance that evening. And whereas the 2019 parade could not have been successful without the volunteers of the parade team, 
led by Tom Gump, who's here with us this here with us this evening, and Leslie Grothy, its co chairs, which team includes the following: Mark Arnold, Amanda Clark, John Curry, David Dickey, Dan Hunt, Carolyn Jackson, Rick Murphy, Ann Plant, Lynn Swan, and the efforts of the Atlanta Community Foundation and its staff, which include the following: Tina Borer, Patty Dronan, Dick Crockett as executive director, Annie Schilling, and Edie Opdahl. And whereas the 2019 Fourth of July parade could not have enjoyed the success it had without the efforts of the Adana Police Department to assist with security and traffic management. Now, therefore, the Adana City Council hereby recognizes the contributions of all participants in the Adana 2019 Fourth of July parade and thanks all volunteers and the organizations involved for their positive impact upon the city of Edina and the, the success of the 4th of July parade in our community. Is there a motion to adopt their proclamation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. We've got a motion and a second to adopt the proclamation as stated. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. And uh, Tom Gump, welcome this evening. And would you uh, make a few comments for us, please? And then I think also you've got a, a, a new person in our community that we should all have a chance to meet on the council and also uh, through television, the medium of television, our, our residents can meet this young man as well. So welcome. Yes, Your Honor. Um, thank you so much to the mayor and to all the council members and all the staff and the police and fire department. Obviously, this is a group effort and uh, it doesn't happen without a lot of help. And uh, we really greatly appreciate that. It's a great place to live. And I'll just ask my wife and son, Ene Ush, who just um, came here from India on Saturday night to uh, right. come up and introduce himself. Andrew's got to track and, me. And that's we had the uh, opportunity to meet Ayush this morning. <laughs> so, um, Please introduce yourself and, and tell folks where you're from. Yeah, so good evening, everyone. Um, I'm from India. My name is Ayush Mundra. And I'm here for my student exchange program, which is for a year long. Um, to be very honest, it's only been three days now, and I feel overwhelmed with how the city has treated me, how the people around me have been so supportive. They've been uh, there for me, and how my host family has been so caring, so kind to me, uh, that I don't want to uh, leave their house and for the rest. <laughs> <laughs> of the time, it's probably something I'm very happy with and very overwhelmed with, and it's great to be here. Yeah, very so, good. Thank, thank you for you. those comments. And Catherine, anything? Um, so I just want to tell you how delighted we are to have another Rotary Exchange student in Edina. So we have two this year, Ayush and Rosario, who's going to be here from Chile. They're both enrolled in Edina High School. Ayush will be a senior, and we're hoping he's on the yearbook staff. And Rosario is hoping to play tennis. So what a wonderful community to welcome them so warmly. Thank and you. Andrew, you, uh, and you Andrew, have you had so many time. experiences as a young man in our so, community with uh, your ha family hosting students from around the world. Yeah, um, hi, I'm Andrew Gump. Um, and it's really cool to have students from around the world stay in my house and I'm an only child so it's really nice to have a sibling for three months. Can deflect some of that attention. It yeah. works well. And Andrew's <laughs> on the cross country team so they're, yeah. tonight the cross country team is doing their mile time, uh, time trial. trial so he's off to do that so we're going to excuse him. All right him. well good luck on Thank those time trials much. Andrew. All right Ayush nice to have you here in town. Tom and Catherine, thank you very much. And Tom, here's the proclamation. Yes, sir. Get it, go get it. And should we do a photo? Yeah. All right, let's do that. Hold on to that, and I'll come around. Okay. I know. Wow. Let's stick to the photo. Ayush, you may want a photo. You can send it home to India. You're already at the seat of city government. We'll do this yeah. first. Let's back up just a little bit so I get this monitor out of here. Oh, they're hiding. Okay, good. You don't really have to hide, Mary. Can <laughs> <laughs> you get a picture there of your thank you, Jen? You bet. Do you want me to take your proclamation? Thank 
Very nice. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice to meet you. All right, that completes the uh, special recognitions and presentations portion of the agenda, and we are going to move on to the public hearing portion of the agenda. And in public hearings tonight, we have two matters uh, before us. One is a, uh, a potential approval of a public drainage and utility easement uh, at Market Street, and then the other matter involves um, 4950 and 4970 Malibu Drive. We will take up the matter involving Market Street first, and Director Milner, our engineering director has this matter. Director Milner. Thank you, Mayor. Members of Council, we'll have you consider resolution 2019-58. The area, this is the Market Street uh, going left and right across the screen, and the area in yellow is uh, drainage and utility easements that were now underneath the new retail building. So this is a vacation of a storm sewer easement we no longer need to clean up the title in those yellow colored areas. So we have no issues with it. Private utilities have no objections. We would recommend you approve resolution 2019-58 and vacate those stormwater easements. All right, thank you. Questions for Director Milner from City Council members at this point in time? All right, hearing nothing. Uh, I'm going to stand by Director Milner. I'm gonna open this uh, matter up for public testimony. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to uh, testify regarding this matter? The public hearing is now open. Hi, Roberta Castellano, 4854 France Avenue South. Actually, I have some questions. Um, one is I'm, I'm wondering about the, the dashed lines that continue north on Halifax, and the easement is, is in that. Uh, All right, why don't you ask your questions, and then we'll come back later for answers after we complete the public hearing. Okay. And then the second part of it is at, at the top. So of the, the first one, Ms. Costellano, was a question about the dashed line north of. That looks like, it looks like Halifax extending north into Sandy Catter's property. And, and the easement is, is within that framework. And then the second question I have is where uh, the easement turns in, off to the west. Um, is there an easement that continues beyond that? I mean, my concern is, is this kind of, is that path that's in Halifax, is that clearing out Halifax, you know, in planning for extending Halifax on, up onto 49th Street, basically. <laughs> but I am also wondering, does the easement continue to the west? If you can answer. All right, very good. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Castellano. Is there anyone else that wishes to uh, testify or inquire regarding this matter? Okay, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. We got a motion and second to close the public hearing. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of closing the public hearing say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, and then the questions Ms. Castellano raised, uh, Director Milner, first one involved the dash line, which looks like it extends uh, into somebody's property. We want to get yeah, that I think back on the. I think she's referencing this dash line over here, and that's just a, a line to set the parameters of where the plat starts and stops and where easements start and stop. So it's just an extension of a line. There's no consideration of Halifax going all the way through to the 49th Street. The other question is east-west. I believe it ends right here. We'd have to look at the title work for that adjacent property, but there's a storm sewer structure right here. So that's, we only need this portion of it for drainage purposes. And it was just set with this whole area back whenever it was established, and we just don't need that additional portion there. So, um, so I can't answer the second one. I don't know if it keeps going unless we look at the title work. All right, but as, as far as it relates to our property, we're comfortable with the abandonment of the Correct. easement. All right, did that cause any uh, council members to have any questions for Director Milner? Okay, and uh, to the extent uh, Ms. Castellano has any other questions she could visit with you after the meeting, I suppose, Correct. too, if she wants to stay around. Yep. Okay, good. All right. Um, this uh, matter of vacating the right-of-way easement, uh, as recommended by staff, is embodied in Resolution 2019-58. Is there a motion to adopt that resolution? So, so moved. We've got a motion and a second to adopt Resolution 2019-58, vacating drainage and utility easement at Market Street. 
Um, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. All right. Director Milda, the next matter is over on Malibu Drive. Correct, Mayor, members of the council, there was a structure fire at 4950 Malibu Drive. At your last council meeting, you approved an encroachment agreement. So the, these property owner owns both these lots and they want to vacate the easement between the two lots so they can build their new home across that uh, former property line. So the community development director can remove property lines, but the council has to vacate drainage and utility easements. So they, you recently approved that encroachment agreement. This will actually vacate those easements so they can construct, continue to work on constructing a new home from that structure fire. We have no issues, private utilities have no objections, and we would recommend you approve resolution 2019-59. All right, questions for Director Milner. I'm going to open this matter up for public testimony. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address the council regarding this matter or make inquiry? All right, seeing no one coming forward, hearing nothing. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. We had a motion and second to close the public hearing with regard to this matter. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of closing the public hearing say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. And then we uh, have a uh, resolution 2019-59 approving a public drainage and utility easement vacation at 4950 and 4970 Malibu Drive. Is there a motion to adopt that resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Got a motion and second to uh, adopt resolution 2019-59 for the reasons stated. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of vacating the drainage and utility easement at 4950 and 4970 Malibu Drive say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. That completes the public hearing portion of the agenda this evening and we'll move on to correspondence and petitions. Manager Neal, is there anything new that's come in or is everything on the dais that we need to have? All right, very Everything's good. Everything's on the dais. All right, and then uh, we do have a uh, petition uh, the restoration of the Highland Park property that was part of our agenda this evening. And um, I'm assuming that both uh, Manager Neal and the engineering department would like us to um, accept this petition and uh, assign it to um, engineering staff for further, further review and consideration. Yes, and, and Mr. Milner will prepare a response to it. Uh, okay. Not sure if it's at your next meeting, but probably it's second in September. So. All right, does someone care to make a motion to receive the petition and refer it to the engineering department for consideration? So moved. Second. There's, we got a motion and second uh, to receive the petition and refer it to the engineering department for consideration. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. And then on to aviation noise update. Member Brindle, anything to report there? Thank you. Uh, we are hearing from residents about um, they feel like something's different, something's changed, um, and it could be uh, it could be mostly that we've had some beautiful weather and windows are open. But uh, you know, it, the the way an airplane takes off is totally uh, dependent on where the wind's coming from because they take off into the wind, and so even if it's you, you're outside and it's not even four, four mile an hour wind or breeze or whatever. Um, it's almost undiscernible that there is a wind. And when that happens, then it is at the airport's discretion. And so they will do what they need to do. Um, the, uh, the, other, uh, the other thing that we're hearing is why can't they turn earlier? Um, this question, it, people are hearing it and people are asking it more and more frequently. Um, at the September 18th Noise Oversight Committee meeting, there will be a presentation that explains how, all the routes and you can see over a period of time all of the departure routes and all of the arrival routes. And they are happening in, in really in concert with one another. So while a departure um, is usually what the call is about lately. Um, and why can't they turn earlier? And that is because they would be in the path of an arriving airliner. 
So um, I am no expert on this. I am a community voice that carries, uh, carries concerns to the, to the Noise Oversight Committee. I don't pretend to be um, a professional in this field, but Brad Jufer, who is, will be making the presentation on September 18th. And uh, so if anyone is interested or would like to see that presentation firsthand, uh, the meeting begins at 1.30 in the afternoon on September 18th at the MAC location on 28th Avenue, just south of Crosstown. Okay, good. Uh, Manager Neal, anything on? Nothing to add to All that. right. I do have a little bit to add. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned at our last council meeting, I was going to have a, a lunch meeting with uh, oh, Brian Ricks, who is the uh, yes. head of the, uh, of the MAC. And we met out at the uh, Intercontinental Hotel, which is uh, next to where he works every day. And we covered a variety of issues, including he was interested in knowing about noise issues in Edina. Mm. So to the extent that we have any uh, increase in reports on noise issues in Edina, I'd like to pass that information along to him and maybe you could sure. get it to me. Yeah, absolutely. There is so much data. Um, and we also know how many complaints come from Edina. We know specifically where those complaints come from. And we can tell how many times a particular address or phone number in that case or email generates a complaint. Sure. But, um, but we we can we can give a volume report and we can also give a variety of these are the concerns. All right. So and I think that uh, the, the the data that you're talking about is kept by the Mac itself. It is. So he could reference that. But I think he was interested also in anecdotally. Did, did, are we getting reports or we heightened are. level of reports on yep. aviation noise? Yep. And I can certainly send you a variety of emails that. Um, I think it's best hearing it from the folks that email me, so um, so I can I, I can provide you what I have. All right, excellent. The other topics we covered were uh, the continued modernization of the airport and the activities that are going on out there. You know, they they are tremendous reinvestors on the on the money they make. They're totally self-sustaining uh, in terms of their budget. They don't use any of their taxing authority, and they're investing I think over 400 million a year. Uh, back into the airport operations, uh, whether it's uh, infrastructure uh, on the runways or it's uh, in the uh, terminal itself, uh, they're doing a wonderful job out there. Um, and I get exposed to this because of uh, capital improvement plan uh, authority of the transportation advisory board that I'm on at the Met Council. So we talked a little bit about that capital improvement plan approval process. And then we talked a little bit about RNAV, and of course we know they're using it on an inbound basis and have for several years. Uh, my sense without any kind of, he doesn't have any ability to commit the FAA to anything, of course, mm -hmm. but uh, my sense, I think, and from talking to him, is that he doesn't believe the FAA is going to come back and implement RNAV on an outbound basis, and that they're going to continue mm -hmm. doing things the way they've been doing them. Uh, and uh, I might have been reading between the lines a little bit, but I, I, I'm, I'm more optimistic than I've ever been about uh, keeping uh, this RNAV policy at bay where they were talking at one time about having two tracks over mm -hmm. Edina, one over central Edina, mm -hmm. one kind of down to Crosstown. And so uh, we like to, um, we appreciate, I think, being close to the airport, but we believe in that philosophy of spreading the pain and, and, and as Member Brindle says, get them up and move them out and fan them out as quickly as you can so that uh, everybody's uh, sharing this load once they're up into the wind and, and can turn and go. So those are the things that I, I chatted with him about over an hour's period of time. <clears throat> He's a, a, a very good hire on the part of the uh, uh, of the MAC, and, and of course he's really pleased to have uh, someone that Manager Neal and I know real well, Rick King, from Eden Prairie as the new chair, uh, was appointed by the governor to uh, run the MAC, uh, be chair of the MAC. And of course, I think one of the reasons the governor did it was because of the great experience he had with uh, Rick King, who was, I think, head of technology or an executive vice president at Thomson Reuters, uh, helped him with the Minlars problem and helped make a determination over there uh, as to the reasons why they ought to seek a new vendor and, and abandon the existing Minlar system. So I think I, w I would at least surmise that 
one of the reasons the governor had confidence in putting him in as chair of the MAC was the experience he had working with him on, on the Minlars problem. Um, all right, uh, mayor and council comments. Uh, Member Anderson, want to lead us off there? Uh, thank you. I, um, just to kind of piggyback on, on Member Fisher's uh, observation earlier today uh, about water, I, it's, this is a staggering year. And it impresses me as to the challenge that we have both today and, and in upcoming years uh, in terms of managing that. Um, we've got a job on our hands, as does every municipality and does the planet. But um, of course, you know, we're charged with our town. And I, I think more about it all the time and uh, wonder, are we proactively finding solutions right now? Because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if next year is going to be drier, warmer, colder. We don't know. But we know that we're certainly in this cycle. And one way or the other, whatever happens, it's up to us to manage it. And uh, I, I, I'm more impressed with that every single day about the great challenge we face. Good. Thank you. Member Brindle. Thank you. We did accept the, the petition from residents who live in the area of Highland Park. And one thing I want to note that um, in the photographs provided with the petition, um, there's one thing I don't see here, in here, and that is that there is a big culvert that pours into this park. And so um, rainfall is the source of the water, but where, where is the water through that culvert coming from? Is it coming from Skyline Drive, which is the street above? I, I, I actually don't know what the other, where the other end of that culvert is, but um, this is quite, it seems to me to be too small an area to be collecting the amount of water that's coming, coming from that. So um, I have no idea what can be done about it. Uh, I'd love to close off the culvert and put it somewhere else, but then it becomes somebody else's problem. Uh, but, uh, but nonetheless, um, there is, uh, other than the, the rain that falls directly from the sky, there, there is water being pushed into this area. Um, and then my only other one is, I just want to make note of one of the items on the consent agenda tonight, and that is resolution 2019-63 in support of climate inheritance. So on April 2nd, we had three students from the high school make impassioned pleas uh, to us to get serious and, uh, and to pass a resolution. They're concerned, they're frightened, they're angry. Um, they, uh, they are typical of people their age who are looking at 12 years from now and what climate change uh, moving as quickly as it is moving is going to end up causing them and, and what they're going to be left with. So uh, they, they are very concerned, they are very angry. And uh, when they were here that night, I was just, I, w I felt badly that they were so upset. But as I've thought about it and talked to other people their age, that it is, it is the same. And, uh, and they're very, very concerned. So, um, so we passed a resolution and hopefully there's action behind that resolution. As you say, uh, we need to step up our, our game and see what we can do, both from a water perspective, but also from just uh, usage of, of other resources as well. Good. Very good. Thank you. Member Sutton? Nothing for me, thanks. Member Fisher? Nothing for me. Good. Just a couple things for me. Uh, uh, prospective in nature tomorrow, both of them tomorrow. Uh, walk with the mayor tomorrow night, 6.30, Centennial Lakes. Uh, meet at the uh, Centrum if you're interested in, in walking around uh, and seeing the new bridges. And I think we're maybe going to take a few photos or do something relative to the new bridges tomorrow night. We'll have some railings on them one of these days. Oh, oh so good. They're coming. And um, 
And then tomorrow also is a, a tab meeting, and we're going to be making some uh, a report out to the tab. We've had a we have a, have had a regional solicitation working group that's been working on some potential recommendations for the next solicitation involving transit, transit modifications, uh, bus rapid transit, where we're enjoying some real success uh, from a transit standpoint. We're looking at some modification on some of our equity strategies uh, and uh, new service guarantees. And so there's some uh, interesting things that are going to be proposed and discussed tomorrow. So that's it for me, Manager Neal. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, a couple of things, and I'll be brief. Um, I have noted for the council in uh, my FRAG report uh, for a couple of weeks that we had a request, uh, staff received a request from the Edina School District to uh, make a presentation to uh, their school board and receive uh, public comment from the school board on our comprehensive plan proposal and on the, on the final draft that the council has approved and submitted to our adjoining communities for comment. Um, so we are working with them to make a presentation first at their committee level, which is how their board works, and then up to their board. Uh, we've told them that given the time frame that we're under, uh, we won't be able really to have much time to involve them in a dialogue, but if they want to give us uh, take the same opportunity to comment that our adjoining cities are, that would work just fine for our time frame. So we're working with uh, both them and Richfield. Uh, the Richfield School uh, District has asked for the same thing. Haven't heard from Hopkins yet. Um, one thing I want to draw your attention to, and it's up uh, on the screen right now, right now. Uh, this is a, a card uh, that we developed uh, as part of our uh, interaction last year with, or this year, uh, with all of the uh, developer builders in town on the residential redevelopment site. This card was developed as something that we would send to property owners in a certain proximity around a, re a rebuild, a teardown rebuild. Um, on, this, on the front of this card, which is what you're looking at, it introduces them to Addison Lewis. Addison is the residential redevelopment coordinator. It gives the main topics that, uh, that he'll handle. He'll handle a lot of topics, but dust, noise, erosion, and parking are the big four in uh, residential redevelopment. On the back side of this card, there's very specific information about a, a development. And, and Jen's going to turn it over. Um, so you can see, this is what uh, a, a resident would receive if they're in the proximity of, of uh, 5916 Oaklawn Avenue. Um, so we've had our first, we've sent out this card, I think maybe twice already so far, because we've just introduced it this summer. And the first one we sent out, we got a very nice compliment from a, a neighbor who received it and told us how important it was uh, because it told her who to contact. She had a child that had some concerns about noise and disruption. So that was, uh, it was very nice to receive that in the first, on the first run. Uh, the next thing is just to remind you that we have uh, uh, two town halls, uh, town hall meetings this fall. Uh, one is a virtual town hall, and you set these dates uh, at your May 21st work session. But the virtual town hall is October 29th from 8 to 9 p.m. That's our first run at uh, uh, a virtual town hall, with, which we're going to use uh, as uh, using technology um, to reach out to folks instead of the regular uh, town hall or the conventional town hall, which is uh, November 16th. And I'll provide you more information on both those town halls as we get a little closer. Uh, tonight, I believe, is our first uh, Facebook Live uh, broadcast uh, of this council meeting. So this is the first time we've used that technology to uh, share a, a live city council meeting with the community. Finally, um, something that we have uh, we are planning for later this fall, and uh, we have not planned in the uh, we have not done this consistently in the fall, but. The City Council's agreement with the, the Adina Chamber of Commerce to operate the Convention and Visitors Bureau uh, has a provision which requires the City Council to review and approve the, the Convention and Visitors Bureau budget for the upcoming year. And you're supposed to do that by November 1st. Uh, we've been um, inconsistent about presenting that budget to the Council. Um, so this year we are going to present it to you per the agreement. Uh, I've given... Um, some timeline instructions to the chamber to produce the budget so we can get it in front of you on October 15th. So that'll be a, a budget action that we'll ask you to take in the middle of October. And I think that's all that I've got for you tonight. Thanks. Okay, good. 
Um, I deferred on one matter because I wasn't sure uh, how to coordinate it with Jennifer Benarat, so I think we've got it uh, figured out now. We had, uh, and I, I don't know if people that are watching on television or were here in front of us this evening have noticed, but we're all wearing a blue lapel pin that uh, our communications director, Jennifer Benarat, gave us all to wear. And it, uh, this blue ribbon uh, lapel pin uh, has to deal with uh, colon cancer and recognition of colon cancer. And, and um, we had uh, a young man who worked here, and I'm sure over the years that, that, that he worked here uh, at City Hall, uh, more than a decade, that people recognized uh, Aaron Klein. And he passed away, uh, I think it was last week or the week before, at age 36. Uh, he has uh, a wife. He has three kids. His wife's name is Randy. His kids are Lincoln, Scarlett, and Watson. And it is a real tragedy to lose him from life, not just because he was working here, but because he was so young and so vital and such a wonderful person and uh, had a wonderful family. And uh, we wish them, uh, we pass along to them our, our greatest sympathy and uh, and hope that uh, there's a brighter tomorrow for all of them. It's it's really difficult to even talk about Aaron. He was such a wonderful guy, and and you know for years and years also uh, did work for the Noon Rotary on on their programming, and uh, was our our city's first video production assistant, uh, and was hired to broadcast meetings at the Dyna City Hall, but he. As he spent that 10 years here, he evolved into all kinds of uh, jobs and, and greater and greater responsibility. And it, it is just tragic to see him gone, but we wish his family the best. So thank you. And that's, I think that's it. Uh, anything further from anyone? All right. We stand adjourned.